Hey and welcome to the video blog. Good that you're with me today. I just wanted to go through a couple of things. I have the auditions ongoing still for somebody to contribute to the channel. Looking at a couple of people, had about a hundred people submit entries. So it's been very competitive and if you did submit an entry, don't worry, I have seen it. And I'm working with a couple of people to kind of narrow it down. So that'll be coming in the next few weeks. I'm off on Monday to go to Germany. This is an ultra cool trip. Uh, going to Germany to Stuttgart, uh, where Porsche's head office is, to see the one millionth Carrera being built. The one millionth 911 on May 11th. So I'm going to do several stories from there. Um, I'm going to do one about going to look at their vintage cars. We're going to have a bunch of older Carreras there, and apparently we're going to get a chance to drive them, which will be really cool because, uh, as many of you know, I've owned two uh, air-cooled 911s. I have a 997 up there on the wall. I love the brand. I love the cars. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, we're going to see the uh, one millionth uh, Carrera being built. We're going to get a chance to drive a Macan uh, performance model on the Autobahn and also get a chance to drive uh, some of the new 911s. And so that's very exciting. So that's going to be all next week. So what I'm going to try and do is, is do videos every day and edit them in Germany and upload them. Hopefully the Wi-Fi connection's good. Fingers crossed. So questions. If you want to get a question into the channel, go to my website, motormouth.ca, and click on the contact tab in the upper right-hand corner and send a question. It's the, much, it's the easiest way for me to get the questions and to go through them and keep them all in one place. So let's get right to the questions. Hey, Zach, I'm a big fan of your channel. Keep it up. Um, I live in British Columbia and thinking of buying a Hyundai Genesis in Alberta, looking at a 15 or 16 model. In Alberta, the car is almost 6,000 grand cheaper than the ones in BC. Do you think it's worth buying a car in Alberta and bringing it back to BC? I know there's some tax we have to pay when insuring in British Columbia. I'm not sure it's worth it. So how the tax works is you're basically, you have um, sales tax to pay. You wouldn't pay, I'm trying to think now. Yeah, you would pay the, the GST, of course, and then you would pay the provincial sales tax where you register the car. So registering the car in British Columbia, it would be subject to provincial sales tax in this province. Now, if you're looking at buying it from a dealer, a dealer can often have the vehicle shipped to you um, and they have access to cheaper freight Going and driving the car back is an option. I mean, it's a nice way to get in touch with your new car is to pick it up and drive it back. You would probably have to go to ICBC and, and find out about how you would get insurance on the car from Alberta back. Now, here's the other thing. If you're going to save six grand on a car, well, use that as your opening bid when you go into a local dealer. If they have a 15 or 16 Genesis, first of all, take away the winter we just had in BC because we did have some snow. Pretty much we have mild winters, not that much salt, and that's the nice thing about the winter is they didn't put much salt down, just some sand and cleared the roads. So they don't have uh, that to contend with in British Columbia for the most part. Um, and also a lot of that sand and grit really can beat up the front of a car, and you see that often with cars from Alberta. They have a lot of pitting in the front, windshields can be damaged, so that's one thing to consider. Now six grand is still six grand, but go into a local dealer and say, hey, look, I can get the same car in Alberta. I can go and get it or get it shipped to me. Uh, hey, can you work on the numbers? And I bet you that they're going to want to sell you the car because Genesis is not that strong a brand. And um, that's exactly what I would do is use that in your favor. This one comes from Woodbridge, Ontario. Wagas, I think is how you say the name. Hey, Zach. Uh, oh, it says, I'm from Maple, Ontario. Love your show. I have a question. I have a 2015 Passat TDI. It's going to go back to Volkswagen under the buyback program. I could get a really good deal on a 16 GTI with almost $4,500 off. So this is what's gonna happen. He's gonna get his 2015 Passat TDI bought back. He's gonna get um, sorry money from Volkswagen and he could get $4,500 off a GTI. So he's going up from a Passat to a smaller car and he says here, my family needs a change now. I don't need a big car. And one of your recent videos, you said, don't buy the GTI. You should go for the R, but the R is more expensive. And he says here the R requires premium gas and the GTI runs on regular gas. I've got an email into Volkswagen about that now. I don't think that's the case. If you want the 210 horsepower engine, then you're going to probably need to put in that premium fuel. Here's the thing. What's going to happen with the GTI 
is they used to have a performance pack model and that's the one I said not to buy because you had to get the top GTI with the performance pack it was only a couple of thousand dollars difference in order to get the Golf R but the the thing is for the 2018 GTIs that performance pack model is going to be basically standard equipment across the GTI range so waiting for a 2018 GTI you're going to get the bigger uh, head unit you're going to get that horsepower bump as standard equipment and and you um, are going to get uh, a newer car. Now, you have to decide whether it's worth um, saving the $4,500, but when you combine the sorry money from VW, the buyback of your, G, of your Passat at the previous 2015 value, and then adding in 4500 bucks to get a GTI, it sounds like a pretty compelling idea. His other question is, um, should I get a GTI or a Passat? You're going back to a Passat with the 1.8 liter. Thanks in advance. Well, it sounds like you're kind of sold on the GTI, and if you are okay with driving the car that's the, going to be the last of that model, that's fine. The other thing you could do is buy the car, drive it for two years, trade it in, and get the more uh, powerful updated engine. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to check my inbox because I have um, an email into VW. No, they didn't get back to me on that. All right. So let's go to the next question. Um, Travis from Vancouver. I'm considering buying a mid-size vehicle, a 2017 Honda Accord Hybrid um, or a Accord Sport. Uh, would you recommend one over the other as a daily driver, primary for city driving in and around Vancouver? Uh, put aside the premium price of the hybrid vehicle versus the gas savings uh, over the ownership period. Are there any other comparable hybrid mid-size vehicles you would recommend or we should consider that have similar reliability and driving characteristics to the Accord? All right, so... Um, the Camry, of course, is the one that's been out the longest if you're looking for a hybrid in the midsize sedan space. However, it doesn't have the same driving dynamics as an Accord. You're right there. The Accord does put a premium more on uh, driving dynamics, and that certainly shows when you drive it. Now let's get back to the Honda Accord, the regular sport model. It's in the mid-20,000 range. It gets the better looking wheels and what have you. And you're saying, uh, put aside the premium price for the hybrid, which one would you choose? The Sport is a compelling package. Now, if you're going to compare hybrids, um, the Kia Optima Hybrid might be another one that you should consider. Also, uh, Hyundai has their new Ionic, which is a hatchback, which is kind of similar in shape to a Prius. It has a hatchback design, but I drove that vehicle uh, at the launch in the winter time and I was really impressed with the driving dynamics because it has an independent rear suspension. It doesn't have a trailing arm suspension like you get with uh, the Prius. So I think, uh, and I should say the previous Prius because the new Prius does have independent rear suspension. So that is something to consider. Uh, the Optima Hybrid, um, the H uh, Honda Hybrid or the regular Honda gas engine or the Camry. The Camry is the safe bet, there's no question about that, or a Prius. And, uh, and try the Optima to see what you like. If it was me, I probably would just go for the regular Honda Accord. It's a, it's a fine car. Um, now, uh, they did have some uh, issues with vibration with the CVT when it first came out. I think it was 15 or so. So look back and see if when you're driving it, if you notice any of that. Jackson from Vancouver. Love your videos and reviews. I'm driving an 11 Golf uh, and love the dynamics of it. I'm looking to upgrade to an SUV and have narrowed down the new Tiguan, the new CX-5 from Mazda. I love the interior styling of both. I found the CX-5 to have a very modern and tasteful interior with many soft touch areas. The Volkswagen, on the other hand, had an Audi-like virtual cockpit, which is available, but many of the door areas had hard, ugly plastics. Also checked into both at the Vancouver Auto Show I'm not sure if the Tiguan one I saw was the final version. Haven't been able to test drive the Volkswagen, but I found the CX-5 enjoyable enough. Uh, the only uncertainty about the CX-5 is the lack of Apple CarPlay. Now that, um, could it be integrated later on? I would appreciate advice, thoughts on the two cars. Thanks, Jackson. All right, so um, the CX-5 is a wonderful product. It does drive very well. It does have what I consider a class-up interior. And it does have that sort of Audi-like MMI system for the center controller for the head unit. Now, <clears throat> most of these systems 
are not reverse engineerable, meaning you can't add uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to uh, an existing head unit. Some manufacturers might be able to do that. Uh, I'm not sure about Mazda. I would definitely talk to the dealership about that. Often the dealer doesn't know. But uh, don't buy a car thinking you're going to be able to retrofit it to uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The Volkswagen cars pretty much all come with that as standard equipment. And the Volkswagen Tiguan that I have driven um, it was beautifully equipped. And I do think that it too has an upscale interior. I call it Audi Light, a lot of these new Volkswagens. And I would um, agree maybe on the bottom parts of the doors, there might be hard plastic, but the tops of the doors and the tops of the dash is fitted with nice um, soft touch materials. The Tiguan is going to be much bigger than the CX-5. The CX-5 is kind of on the small end of compact utilities and the Tiguan is going to be quite large. So uh, I would kind of hold off. Uh, the Tiguan is going to be coming... Uh, this summer, um, I'm going to hopefully be going to a launch of that vehicle down, I think it's in San Antonio, um, and uh, I'll get another chance to drive it. I would hold off. If you're not in a rush, wait for the new Tiguan to come. I think this car is going to be a big hit for them. It's bigger. Um, it has a really nice design. It's got a very nice interior, and I think they're really going to hit the sweet spot with that. So if you're not in a rush, uh, maybe wait to get the final version, or if I get a chance to drive it. This next one comes from Ronald in Ottawa, Ionic versus Prius. I've been watching your videos on the Ionic and I'm hesitating between the Prius and the Ionic. What do you think based on cost of ownership drivability? All right, so as I just referenced, the Ionic is Hyundai's um, entry into hybrid uh, technology. Hyundai has hybrid, they have plug-in hybrid, they have full electric, and they also have fuel cells. So it's a company that definitely is doing a lot of advanced technology. The Ionic is, I think, uh, a more stylish car. It's not hard to beat the uh, current Prius in terms of styling because uh, the Prius can be really awkward looking, especially from the back. But the, the Prius is built on the new global platform and they put a whole lot of engineering and effort into the drivability of that car. So I would suggest that um, it is a much better car to drive. They did a much better job uh, in the way that it goes down the road and it is the king of hybrids and it has been out for, uh, for 20 years. They've sold 10 million hybrids. How can you go against Toyota? They know what they're doing. They build a reliable product and you can buy that Prius and drive it for 10 years and really not have to worry about much. On the other hand, the Ionic is new. It has a more conventional look. It's got a more conventional interior. It's nicely finished on the inside. It drives very well. When I drove it, I drove the uh, Ionic Hybrid and the new electric version of the Ionic. Wasn't blown away by the Ionic Electric, but I was really impressed with the Hybrid. So what I want you to do is go and try them and see what you think. Back seat of the Ionic was not that good for headroom. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, they're being very aggressive on pricing with the uh, Ionic, so it's, it's definitely a vehicle that you should consider. But when you stack all of that up against the proven, reliable, known entity that the Prius is, uh, the Prius would trump it for sure, but if you're willing to take a chance on a new brand, uh, it might be worth it. And if that's the case, maybe leasing it isn't a bad way to go and you know that you're going to have an option to get out of it or keep it after three or four years. <clears throat> Ricky writes from Vancouver, uh, SUV with the feel of good old hydraulic steering. Uh, Ricky writes, I uh, love your vlog straight to the point, no sugar coating. For the sake of the manufacturers, I need to upgrade to a luxury compact SUV uh, for uh, getting in and out of for my aging parents and driving them around town. I now have an 08 C-Class C350 Sport Rear Wheel Drive. I enjoy the steering feel uh, every time. It's precise and weighted and great road feel. Test drove the X1 from BMW, the GLC. 300 from Mercedes, the Q5, all failed to spark the driving excitement and control due to the numbness of electric steering. Only the Macan S steering feels close, but still not quite as good as my 10-year-old sedan. The S is 75,000 plus after selected options, which is very expensive. He writes, yikes, exclamation mark. Which luxury model would you recommend has steering precision? Ideally under $65,000. Porsche PASM, Porsche Active uh, Suspension Management and Torque Vectoring um, and Audi Sport Differential. Um, are these necessary? I'm driving within Vancouver city limits. Well, none of this is necessary. 
um, <laughs> you know, uh, a, a Toyota Yaris will get you and your parents around town. So all of this stuff is unnecessary. Um, what you really have to come down to is, 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 you know, you're going from older technology to the newest technology. And the reason why car manufacturers have gone to electric power steering is it reduces the load on the engine, therefore saving fuel. Um, I've heard about 3% in some vehicles. So that's the reason they're doing it. Now, the reason that Porsche's system feels good is they have an electromechanical power steering rack. So um, when you order the power steering racks from, say, a supplier, they have different grades. There's less expensive and more expensive. A Porsche invests in a more expensive rack, and that's something that you notice, especially when you're driving their sports cars. When the first um, hydroelectric systems um, came out, uh, me uh, electromechanical systems, I should say, came out from the uh, Porsches in the 991, there was some issues with it, but they've cleaned it all up. They do make a good system. Them. Here's the thing. I think for under $65,000, uh, you like the Macan S. I would consider the, the SQ5, the new SQ5. It has an adaptive suspension. You can get the upgraded uh, sports uh, feel to it. What I want you to remember is when you get any of these new cars, any of them if you've listed, the GLC, the X1, the Q5, any of them, after two weeks, you'll forget about the old car. You will, you'll just forget about it. And that will be your new norm. And you'll start to appreciate the other things about the vehicle. So vehicles I would consider is the GLC, um, the 43 with the turbocharged six cylinder engine, and it's got the bigger wheels, and that's gonna make the, the car feel different on the road. The SQ5, or invest in upgrade packages for the less uh, powerful models. So those are some to consider. But the real thing is, do you need a PASM torque vectoring and Audi Sport differential for driving in the city limits of Vancouver? No, you don't. So really, you're kind of getting in your head here. Um, Go and pick the car that suits you and moving your parents around the best. After a few weeks, you'll really forget about the old car. And if you're going to choose a car, choose them with the sports uh, functions, and that hopefully will help alleviate any concerns you have. Get the sports packages. Mike G says, first off, want to say great YouTube channel, great reviews. In fact, we bought a 2016 Honda Pilot Navi primarily based on your review of the Touring model. I agree with you on most points about the Touring model. I said don't buy the Touring model because it was the early iteration with the 9-speed automatic and the one I drove was no good. I, I drove the MDX. Uh, I just put out a review this week and um, it was much improved but uh, that's what I said in that review is get the 6-cylinder, the lower trim or middle trim pilot and don't get the 9-speed. We're thinking of getting a second smaller SUV for the family. We're considering one of the following and wanted to get your opinion on which one is best. We're a family of four who likes the outdoors and want luxury aspects of the cars. We're looking at an RDX, Lexus NX F Sport, RDX uh, 350 F Sport, and maybe Mercedes GLA. Which one would you go for and why? I did write back to Mike and I said, throw in there the GLC from Mercedes-Benz. That's their C-Class base utility. You can get it with the four-cylinder turbo. Now you can get it with the six-cylinder turbo and that one is called the, um, uh, the 43 and I've seen it. It looks dynamite. So the NX is very soft. Um, it's what I would call traditional luxury. At the auto show in Shanghai, they showed the updated NX that's going to have the adaptive suspension that is available in the, in the RX, the larger Lexus RX, and it does make a difference. Like the new RX to me is a huge improvement over the last model. So between the NX and the RX, I would go RX based on the fact it has that uh, adaptive suspension. The RDX is, is probably the best all-rounder of the bunch. It, it really is a very competent vehicle. It's the Honda CRV with a nicer interior and a V6 instead of a four cylinder and a conventional automatic transmission, no CVT at play there. So that is a car that you're gonna buy and drive. I put so many people into the RDX and they're happy with them. They're a bit bland to be honest with you. So it seems to me if you're looking at these F Sports from Lexus, consider the, um, the CLA uh, with the 43 and also between the two Lexus, I think the RX is a better choice. And if you're not in a rush, the NX will be coming with an up, 
updated and revised suspension uh, for the 2018 model, which will probably be this fall. Sam from Stony Creek. Hey, Zach. I am from Hamilton, Ontario. I'm going to graduate university soon. Well done for you. I currently drive a Kia Rio that might potentially be the worst car ever. I have a $30,000 budget and I'm looking for a new car to buy within the next one to two years. So this is a ways out. I really want a hatchback, especially the Civic hatch, but the Sport Civic hatch requires premium fuel, which is something I said in the review, and it really is something to consider. Plus, it's got those really ugly uh, uh, grills on the front and the back. Uh, it's now between an 18 Subaru Crosstrek, um, the hatchback, and a 19 Mazda 3 when it comes out. What do you think I should do? Well, you have $30,000 budget. That's a healthy budget. You've got one to two years to go. You don't need to make any choices now. You need to go out and start driving some cars when they're available. For example, the Subaru Crosstrek is coming out this summer. I'm not sure when the time, what the timeline is for the Mazda 3. Uh, I would throw the Golf in there. Um, if you're wanting a hatchback and a fun car to drive, uh, for $30,000 you can get a GTI. That's certainly a nice car to drive. Um, so you've got some options. My advice to you is don't be in a rush. Um, the one nice thing about the Golf, it doesn't re require premium fuel and it is turbocharged. The Mazda is a wonderful car to drive. So you're in no rush. Uh, if you've got one to two years, let's. there's going to be so much change in a year in the auto industry. You don't uh, get back to me when you're getting closer to that. But keep adding to the budget. Uh, it's always nice to get a nicer car. So the more you add to that budget, the better, you're off, better off you are. Well, that's all the time we have for uh, this edition. As I mentioned, I'm off to Germany next week. So I'll be doing some updates from there. Uh, it really is important if you if you have friends that um, are not subscribed to the channel, if you could get them to subscribe, it would really help out the old Zach man a lot to get more subscribers. My goal is to get to 70,000 subscribers soon. I think I'm going to put together a contest. What do you guys think about that? If I, if I put a contest together to get to 70,000, then I'll give some cash away. I'm thinking 500 bucks. I'll, everybody that that gets two friends to subscribe to my channel or entered for, for a $500 uh, check or cash or whatever. And if you live in the States, that's like $1.25. Your choice, Canadian or US. Uh, so I, I think I might do that. What do you think? Uh, you can uh, get to me at motormouth.ca, click on the contact tab, get the questions in. I will answer them. I'm going through them in chronological order. So if you just get one in today, it might take a while to get through them, but I will get to them. Thanks everybody for sending in questions. I'll continue to answer your questions and uh, let me know what you think about that idea of, uh, of pay to get more subscribers. I think it might work. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.